Good morning. Um, I'm going to deviate a little bit from the script. I like to share a scripture with you and um, do a devotional, but today I'm going to do something a little different. Um, there's some of you that watch this feed on Ann's Facebook or in other places that don't check up on the church's website or the church's Facebook page. And um, I, I want to share with you something that I wrote and that we posted on the church uh, website and Facebook page yesterday. And um, just make sure that you understand where, where I'm coming from with this. Um, we had our mandate from the governor this past week that uh, he said now people are expected to uh, wear face masks in any public gathering place, including church. And so I wrote yesterday three reasons why I'll be wearing a mask in church on Sunday. Now I'm allowed to pull it down when I preach, but um, when I'm not preaching or leading in worship, I'm gonna have a face mask on and I wanna to explain to you why. Um, there are three reasons why. The first reason is this. Um, wearing a face mask, not wearing a face mask, this isn't a religious issue. This is a civil issue. That's what it is. It's not a religious issue. You know, I've been at this um, for over three decades. I've been in ministry that long. I have gone through seven years of theological training. I have, um, in preparation for this, done research to see if there's any biblical justification for denying wearing these things when I'm asked to by my political leaders. And there isn't. There is no solid biblical justification for not wearing a face mask. And if the question comes down to whether um, it's a civil issue, which I have a disagreement over, or a religious issue, when, when I'm given the freedom to come to church, when I'm given the freedom to come to worship, but given a civil requirement that I have to wear a face mask there, I'm going to follow the civil requirement in order to exercise the more important right, which is to gather to worship the Lord. So that's the first reason. The second reason is that um, I am given very specific um, direction where um, I am asked by the Lord to follow the legal authority that he has allowed over me where it doesn't conflict with a biblical command. Now, let me say, there are exceptions to following this face mask rule. If you have a health issue, some people think that the exception is that it infringes upon our political freedom. But the Bible does give me clear direction uh, about following authority. Romans chapter 13, verses 1 and 2 says, Let every person be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which is granted by God and those exist have been instituted by God. Therefore, whoever resists those authorities resists what God has appointed, and those who resist will incur judgment. Titus 3.1 says, Remind them to be submissive to rulers and authorities, to be obedient, to be ready for every good work. 1 Peter 2 says, Be subject for the Lord's sake to every human institution, whether it be to the emperor as supreme or to governors as sent by him to punish those who do evil and to praise those who do good. For this is the will of God that by doing good, you should put to silence the ignorance of foolish people. Now, they're writing this about a government, all three of these verses, they're writing about a government that has been oppressive to their religious freedom. Uh, let me just be blunt here. I am not a fan of the governor of Virginia. I'm not. He has instituted policies which I will stand against and which I encourage our church to stand against. He legalized marijuana. Come on. He wants to impose LGBTQ rights upon religious institutions who have a biblical stance and a strong conviction against. He wants to impose those upon us. This particular governor has broadened abortion rights and he's even publicly stated that he thinks that there are circumstances where it's okay to allow the death of a child once it has been born in the days after its birth. 
Um, I don't I don't care for his policies. I will vote against those policies that he stands for and whoever runs for governor in his place the next time an election comes around. However, right now, he is my governor. And the Lord has allowed him into that position. Now, maybe he allowed him there to teach me a lesson. But he is my governor. And I am commanded to follow these instructions if it does not conflict with my religious beliefs. But third, and this is really the most important reason why I'm going to be wearing a mask on Sunday. The Bible tells me that there are times where I need to set aside my rights in service to the Lord and also in concern for other people. For me, this is the most important thing. Galatians 5.13 says, For you were called to freedom, brothers, only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. And this virus is real. People in our church family and community have contracted it. Some are dealing with it right now. There are vulnerable people all around us. And though I may feel safe, there are others who don't. If I can show my concern for them by inconveniencing myself, I don't like wearing this mask, but if I can show my concern for them by wearing this mask for a little while, for an hour or two on a Sunday, I'll do so. Now, if I'm wrong, well, the only one who is hurt is me and that I have to wear this mask for a little while. But if I choose not to wear a mask and I'm wrong, then I could be potentially passing along a virus that can sicken and severely hurt or even kill some people. I'm not willing to take that chance. And so I'll lay aside my rights in order to show concern for others. We won't have mask police at church on Sunday telling people they have to have a mask before coming in. But I'm encouraging you, lay aside your rights, at least for an hour or two on Sunday so that we can come together and focus on the most important thing, worshiping Jesus Christ. That's why I'll be wearing a mask on Sunday. I hope to see you there if you can come. If not, we'll see you all online. God bless you, friends. Let me pray with you. God, there is so much that's going on around this issue right now. I pray that you would give us wisdom and discernment. And I pray, Lord, that you would guide our steps in these days ahead. I especially pray that you would give our leaders discernment. That you would convict their hearts, not just on this issue, but on so many other things that we see that we would stand against from a biblical perspective. Lord, we love you. And we want our focus, when we gather together for worship, we want our focus to be on you. And I thank you that we can gather together and honor your name. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, friends. See you tomorrow.